What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So in this video, I wanted to go over five most important things to watch in 2024. So as the year is upon us, the new year, and 2023, it's the last day of the year today, uh, I wanted to break down five things that I'm gonna be paying attention to. I will be watching very, very closely to kind of better understand what kind of year it might end up looking like for the markets, for the economy, and just for money in general. So. Hope you all enjoy this video and find it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And again, today is the last day to sign up for our uh, Discord and our Patreon. Again, link's gonna be down below for that 16% annual discount. You get access to all the members-only private videos, Excel spreadsheets, including all of our Discord channels with buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas. Everything is going, excuse me, going to be included with the link down below. And uh, we'll love to have you on board. So definitely do check that out. And after midnight tonight, it is going to expire. So starting with inflation, as I'm sure you already know, inflation is going to be the most important indicator of 2024, as it already has been this year in 2023. So the reason why it's so important is because the Federal Reserve's monetary policy, which is interest rates, are directly, directly correlated with where inflation goes. So if inflation starts accelerating, if it starts going up again, the Federal Reserve obviously is going to have a tough time kind of, you know, essentially holding rates steady at where they are and have a tough time cutting rates because if inflation is elevated above the Fed's target, they're not going to budge and they're not going to decide to lower rates. It's because inflation has been trending lower, which is a good thing. That's exactly why the Federal Reserve's also penciled in a couple cuts and they're also very much optimistic about interest rates coming down next year. But if inflation doesn't come down fast enough or it doesn't come down at all, that's a problem. So that's number one, the most important leading indicator of monetary policy. The second thing, of course, is going to be something that's correlated with that is interest rates, right? So interest rates, as the market's pricing in seven cuts next year, that's a very, very optimistic target. And the Federal Reserve's only pricing in three, maybe four rate cuts next year, and the yields have already started dropping with the mortgage rates also coming down. So, you know, cost of borrowing was cheap. It was actually very cheap. Then it got somewhat cheap. Then it got expensive. Then it got incredibly expensive. And now it's a little bit less expensive. So that's really what's the path the cost of borrowing has taken. It went from zero to over 5%, mortgage rates at over 8%, and now they have pulled back a little bit. And now the real question is, are we going to settle at these levels? Are we going to continue to come down? Or are we going to reaccelerate back up? And a lot of those are going to be answered by the first point, which I made, which is inflation. So inflation is first, interest rates is second. That obviously is really what's going to dictate where the markets go. The third is going to be the biggest event of next year, and that is going to be politics, right? It's going to be a very, very big political year, not only in the United States where we have the presidential elections, but we also have the Lok Sabha national elections over in India. And it's only in over once 20 years that these two events collide with each other. Uh, again, India is a very, very strong emerging market, emerging economy, US being the biggest economy in the world. So those two very, very significant events. And that are really what's going to dictate where interest rates go. Because, uh, you know, on one hand, you know that there is going to be some political pressure on Jerome Powell to operate in a way that creates this environment of maybe lower interest rates and kind of eases on the consumer because consumers are struggling with higher interest rates as they always do. But if Joe Biden, of course, wants to keep his presidency, there's going to be some political pressure to lower interest rates to make sure that a lot of things become more affordable for consumers, especially when inflation continues to be elevated. And of course, prices, the price index is going up, right? So it's not just... Inflation is coming down. There's no deflation except for energy. Prices for groceries, food, apparel, transportation, a lot of these things are still up from two years ago. In fact, significantly up from two years ago. So it's still becoming more and more problematic for consumers to finance the cost of a lot of these items. Uh, and as a result, there could be some political pressure on monetary policy, even though Jerome Powell's kind of mentioned that they operate independently of fiscal policy and political parties but you never know what's going on behind the scenes. And that's exactly why politics is going to be a very, very key event going into 2024. Number four, and a very, very important element of overall recession expectations is going to be, if you haven't guessed already, unemployment. So unemployment has been very resilient. In other words, we've seen a very strong labor market, resilient jobs growth, and a very, very low unemployment. And that's partly because of the strong consumer spending 
Consumers are spending, even if it's on the back of debt and credit cards, they're spending, companies are generating cash flow and earnings, and as a result, they keep on hiring, they keep on employing people, and unemployment is really, really low. So if that starts getting picked up next year, that's going to be one of the first leading recession indicators for the economy, which of course, many people do expect a mild to somewhat medium recession expectations. Many investors and analysts also do expect a soft lending for the economy. So that thereby is going to be another very, very important indicator to watch for the US economy, for the markets going into 2024. And finally, last but not least, we've got housing. And housing market is also under a lot of pressure, especially when you consider the rates are so high, not so much of a price pressure, but especially from a buyer perspective, it's become less and less affordable for buyers to buy any homes. They're either a... Uh, they're going. They're dealing with very, very significant interest rates, so seven, eight percent mortgage rates, uh, or B, they're dealing with very, very high prices. So you've got a combination of high prices with high rates, and this is not a market where buyers have any power to negotiate. Especially when you consider the sellers are mostly financed at sub two percent, sub four percent, really, really low interest rates. When they were low, they refinanced, and over I think sixty to seventy percent of mortgages in the U.S. are sitting at sub six percent. Might even be over eighty to ninety percent sitting at sub 6%. So it's incredibly difficult for buyers to afford or buy a home considering the higher interest payments at the moment. So that again is going to be very important because if interest rates do start coming down, you're going to see an influx of buyers. Once again, demand starting to kind of revamp. And of course, we'll see if the sellers start selling at those prices, if they start budging to the downside, and especially rents, shelter prices, very, very important catalyst for overall inflation. So kind of brings us back to point one, because shelter does control over 30% of overall inflation. So depending on where rents go, that's what's going to dictate where CPI ends up going. More specifically, core CPI uh, is going to be dictated by shelter prices as well. So there you have it. Five things I'm watching in 2024. First thing is going to be inflation. Very important leading indicator, followed by interest rates, which is under monetary policy from the Federal Reserve. Third is going to be politics, which of course is also really important. Uh, and then the fourth thing is going to be unemployment, jobs gains, jobs market, where's the jobless claims, initial claims. And finally, uh, we've got the housing market, which is also going to be very important in, in kind of dictating where the equity markets go from a directional standpoint. So hope you all enjoyed this video. Find it helpful. If you did, make sure you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Again, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining and of course getting access to all the members only private videos, buy and sell alerts, options alert, trade ideas. Everything's going to be included. And uh, as always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.